and hello and welcome along to another customer review from Lamp Power TV and I think it is fair to say we are definitely talking high capacity self propelled forager outfits today. So I'm out with RG Contracting based near Port William and they run a pair of Crone Big X self propelled foragers. Now they've had an 1180 for a while and this season they got the uh, brand new from Crone, the new 980 model which we will have a look later on in the episode in a lot more detail. But for now I am joined by the main man himself, the gaffer, the boss man of uh, RG Contracting, Mr Russell Gore. So to kick off Russell, I mean just explain your business a little bit for us. We sort of got going back in 1994, uh, started off with a Rico Mangeli, Rico 40 chopper. We ran that just for one season, for a year, and by that time we'd realised, yeah, well, we're not going to be able to cope with the workload we have. Right. So I bought my first uh, self-propelled, which was a class 820, and it's just all well, from then on, it's just expanded quite rapidly, and we went to Crone about seven years ago. And to be quite honest, we're very happy with what we've got just now, and yeah. it's going it's going well, to be honest. Yeah. So, when you first went to Crone, what was it that sort of made you go that way? What was it about them that sort of attracted you to them? To be honest, I wasn't too much uh, brand led. I was just what the best deal at the time and what was going to suit us better. So we had a chance of uh, starting to get into a little bit of AD work. We started that off with some energy beet that we're harvesting uh, up in Cooper Angus, which is a fair bit away from us, but it was just a, a rung and a ladder to get into a bit more work. Yeah. And we'd done a research into what Crone were doing in terms of their chopping cylinder to get that chop length we required and they were just that wee bit ahead of the competition and and it was the right deal for us at the time so we went to them we thought we'll give it a go and fair to play to them uh, it, it was the right choice at the time yeah. definitely yeah and well, as you see we're, we're quite high horsepower led and you get a season like we're having this year we had a we we're into a full sense of security with six weeks of brilliant weather at the start of the campaign uh, to the extent that most folk were looking for rain but unfortunately when the rain did come it uh, I don't think we've had three dry days in a row since so right. when, we, when folk are wanting to go to it we have the capacity to you know muck in and get on with it and get it done so forager wise will roughly be, if you include the rye harvest we do, etc., we must be around about 16, 17,000 acre mark. Right. Uh, and just silage is the main body of that. Yeah. Don't do any maize at all. We're not an arable area. We're very much, as you've probably seen driving about, we're a grassland area. Yeah. A lot of dairy herds, a lot of dairy cows, um, big milk producing area, obviously. When we're doing the forage dry, when you're chopping it down to five mil, four mil, whatever, uh, the more horsepower you can throw into that, yeah, the better you're going to get on. And then just going back to sort of like your customer types, yeah, I would imagine that especially when you're chopping silage around this area, it must vary quite a lot because you'll go from those dairy boys that uh, some of them will be multi-cut, you'll be doing two, three, four cuts for them, and will there be some beef? guys thrown in as well, maybe the one cuts as well, that, just for right. good measure. Yep, yep, we've got guys that do up to five cuts, uh, and as you say, we've got the beef boys that uh, will just have finished some of their first cuts just in the last week or so, so, right. and that's, uh, that, that's meaty, meaty stuff to get through, I can yeah. tell you. Again, horsepower comes into play at that point. No bother, but the, the one stumbling block you'll have with all the power and everything is silage pits, you know, you're, uh, you've got to have good big silage pits, good access, 
room for these machines to work, the loading shovels on the pit, etc. Big trailers to tip, good exits. And if you get all that going together, you know, these, a single forager, we've done over 300 acres in a, a 12 hour day. Yeah. And so, when beforehand, if we did 150 acres in a day, we were, we were punching, we we're thinking, this is the business. <laughs> but now you're like, well, we've got that window of weather, we can go in there and come away with a result. And in the round, have you any idea sort of tonnage per hour? Yeah, yeah. Generally, well, average, I would say 230, 240 tonnes an hour. You go up to, depending on the header and what the header, the header is your limiting factor just now. Right. Uh, the forager will outperform the header. Yeah. Because the, I mean, you're looking at some of the crops, 25, 28 tons to the acre. Right. So it's huge volume and bulk. Yeah. But yeah, we've, you can go up to 300 tons an hour. We had a wee trial with a, a maize header a 14 row maze header and we were getting up to just short of 400 tonnes an hour when it was in, in the front of this, just with what it could pull in. And what would you say are some of its uh, standout features? <coughs> of this machine? Yeah. The feed. The feed is great on it. You can just keep knocking it into it. There's a lot of folk going about it. the six feed rollers and how it just sets the the grass going into the cylinder, far more uniform. And you just get that better consistent chop. I mean, there's just no getting away from it. We've had uh, all the other competition, I've, I've tried them, I've tried them, but no, if, if <laughs> you're wanting that consistent five mil chop for chopping rye, or even just a consistent 15 mil in grass or whatever, yeah. you'll, you'll no go past this, I don't, I don't think yet anyway. I mean it will block, anything will block, you put a, a big enough lump in front of it, of course it yeah. will. But generally it will just keep wolfing it in and that, that compression just stops any, like I think, big shock loads going into the cylinder. Yeah. So it keeps a constant all the time. So it would be V12 in this and the 918 yeah. now. Yep. And well, there's the 980, we can virtually dial up horsepower. And we're up at the rye, where we're just into some really, really heavy stuff. So, online, on the phone, just go into your Crone account, and you can have 100 horsepower, 200 horsepower, book it in for how many hours you want it, uh, and just send it to your forager. Obviously, you've got to pay for it, but... Yeah. It's a, it's a great wee add-on, and it just it comes up in your forager screen when you're wanting to use it, and if you're not wanting to use it, so you get to maybe you get to the next field and it's a lot lighter. Yeah, I'll just switch off the extra power. Right, away you go. I think that, that's a good idea. And it'll save that for the next time when yep. you want to. It's not just going to go away. It, do, it doesn't just it's disappear. No time limit or anything like no. that. No. And yep, you will use more fuel with this in a day, but. <laughs> You'll be doing, sometimes you can do up to half again as much as what you would be doing. So, actually, as far as fuel goes, it works out. You're getting better fuel economy because you're doing so much, so many acres in a day with it. Yeah. So, it, it really does. Because uh, I think when I first got it, folk were a bit skeptical. You know, that big, big engine, obviously, it's going to use more diesel, but. When you see what it does in the short time it does it and what diesel it uses, you're like, no, it's absolutely spot on. Yeah. And you know, where you just about see fuel as well as well, your tractors that are hauling in, it doesn't matter if they're uh, sitting in the field waiting to get filled or constantly on the go, they're not going to sit and switch off the tractor while they're waiting to get filled. So if you're keeping them going the whole time. That's it, they're and, not stopping. Yeah, yeah. and we've, we're put, we can put the same amount of trailers on out here and there. Generally, we'll put the same amount on, but you'll be, you know, you'll be four or five hours earlier finish the job. So they're running for four or five hours less. So you're saving fuel, definitely saving a pile of fuel there as well. So yep, no, this is its uh, fourth season, it's about, 
1800 hours on it. And getting the 980, what was the sort of thought process? thought process around sort of choosing that model when there's so many others in the in the Crown family you might say yep well such as another 1180 <laughs> aye well we just we just felt we in grass you can't utilize the full power of the, of the 1180 to be honest and we just thought the 980 would be plenty for getting on with and it would be a good match for the Crown X disc header so we got got it, and it is. It really is in grass. It's very much similar to this year. Yeah. There's not a lot of difference because it's just it's just how much you can load up the header, to be honest. And yeah. And like I said before, having that flexibility to uh, power it up a bit, uh, you know, just well, buying, is, buying power. That's it. If we, if we are stuck, yeah, we can just go out, go on to the app, and there we are. We've got, uh, we've got 200 more horsepower if we want it. And when you have this and the 980 side by side, especially in the ride where it's probably more noticeable, well, can you uh, see the performance difference between the two forages? Yeah, and, and the ride you can. This one will just be a little bit ahead of it. Uh, you'll be doing, well, say, say, if you judge it by, say, kilometers an hour, uh, say the 980 is doing seven and a half, eight kilometers an hour, this will be doing nine, nine right. and a half. Again, I'm going back to the rye, but for header setup, if we've got some blade crops and we want to get right underneath it, or maybe the header's flat in the ground as it is, we can just jack up the back suspension. Right. Get a bit more tilt on it, get underneath it a yeah. bit more, that really helps. Pitch, so pit, Effectively pitching the header down. Uh, absolutely, uh, yeah works a treat so just we just wee silly things like that that you wouldn't think of I mean uh, obviously when we first got it I just you know suspension on the back of it a bit of a gimmick that's fine it comes with it but when you can use it for things like that and hooking on headers hooking off headers mm. suspension adjustment just to get it right it's great an update on it last year was uh, the, the traction control was good but it wasn't just I wouldn't just say it was set in the place and fire, it was okay. So what they've done is they put a gyroscope in it. Right. So it knows what tilt, what level of slope we're on. So it knows what wheel to set the traction oh, mostly right. to, because they're all hydraulic motors. Yeah. That made a huge difference. Crone themselves, um, backup wise and looking after us, uh, to be quite honest, you can't, can't really fault them. We've had, a little issue with this with our blue. Took them a wee while to get to the bottom of it, but everything was taken care of, no problem at all. Parts were getting brought up in taxis from Leeds on a Saturday afternoon. Right. Yeah, really spot on from them. Yeah. And so we get three years warranty with them. And because we had a little issue with that hard blue in this, we're gonna have an issue with that door in a minute. <laughs> and uh We've uh, they put an extra year warranty on this for us, so oh, wow. so four years cover in this, and three years on the the new 980. That's not bad. And who would be your dealer for the uh, the Crown Forages? Uh, it's John McNay up at Tarbolton. So that's up in here, so it's 70 miles away. Right. Uh, but we have got cars Billington, at Stranraer, which is 30 miles away. That is. Uh, just moved into the area, I would say in the last 18 months. They're also crone dealers, so. Right. Spare parts is, yep, we can go to cars and get there, but we use, still use <clears throat> McNay's for service. Yeah. They've got a good guy who knows all about foragers and he, he thinks nothing of just jumping in his van any time of day and just <laughs> down the road see us. So, no, good, good, great backup. If you don't have any backup, you're, you're done. Well, Russell, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on your time with uh, the, uh, the Big X self propelled Forages. I think uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to have a chat to uh, your son David, who is piloting the 980, no which is your latest Forager, and Chrome's latest Forager as well. So we'll go and get stuck into that one, and we'll go and see how we're getting on. Fantastic, that's great. So,
Right, ladies and gents, so we are now on the Big X980, piloted by David. So, this new 980 that you've got, how long have you had this one now? It's just new to this season here. Um, we started with it just at the beginning of May there, and uh, no, it's been doing really well for us. We've uh, just mainly been at it with the grass, and we've uh, chopped, what have we done, about 300 hectares of rye with it. Right. Uh, as well for AD work as well, so. Yeah. Um, no, it's been put through its paces already, I would say. How but, much grass would you say you put through it so far? Oh, it'll be probably a couple thousand acres. Right, all right, through. you're fairly getting through yeah, it then. No, I've been uh, busy enough with it. There's plenty of uh, horsepower to go around anyway, so you're, um, that's been uh, pretty good, so we can get over the ground quite the thing, especially well, like today, this stuff here was just cut yesterday. I was going to say, this looks fairly fresh, yeah? yeah. This is a bit of and moisture still so in this. This is just, we've got a two day, uh, two dry days here, so yeah. um, it's cut one day, left the next, so. That's it. And are you always in this area, being so close to the sea, are you always sort of fighting the weather and yeah, trying to Yeah, now and again, especially southwest Scotland, here we, yeah. Definitely, and they're all is because it's pretty. There is a bit of rain, there is a bit of heat as well, so it's always pretty decent crops. Yeah, big crops and stuff. So, so you got big crops and short weather windows. <laughs> so we need the big choppers. Hence why you got two <laughs> massive foragers, and then that all important chopping performance, which it looks like it's you know, like we said, it's handling these big swaths with relative ease. Yeah. I would say. Mm -hmm. How would you sort of describe the the crop flow on this? How's it been for you guys? Oh, it's been it's been great. We, well, as I said, the grass can tend to be pretty damp sometimes, so there's so it's tedded out quite a lot. And well, if it's tedded a few times, it gets pretty lumpy yeah. and stuff. But this these crones that can handle the lumps pretty pretty well uh, in our experiences anyway, and especially when you know. Tedded out and then a four rotor rake through it. Sometimes it can get a bit lumpy. Yeah. Uh, but these things just seem to, seems no problem to them at all. And this, the good crop flow, what would you put that down to? Is it the pickup, the six feed rollers on this? Or? Well, probably a mixture of the both of them. I mean, the pickup there, you can't, you can't really, we've not really been able to kill it yet at all. Uh, <laughs> Famous and, last words. I uh, know, no. no we'll <laughs> now you're on camera. Here. <laughs> but the six feed rollers as well, it just seems to smooth it, smooth it out very nice and and gives a nice kind of even chop length as well. Mm. I think it must be the smoother, the smoother feed going into it. Yeah. Uh, gives a nice chop. So. And what chopping cylinder are you running in this? Because you mentioned before you're doing a mixture of you know you're doing AD work and obviously yep. you do, you know you're chopping grass for feed. Yep. So what cylinder have you got in this? So uh, it's a 40 knife cylinder we've got in and we're just running the half set at 20 the now for the grass and then obviously full set of 40 for right. uh, when we're at the rye for the AD work. So what's access like to the chopping cylinder? Um, no, well we, it's, it's no problem to us, I mean we've got the trolley there at home uh, for the workshop so we're just into the workshop and we can, you know, f five, ten minutes has the feed rollers right off and you're right yeah. into the, the guts it. of it. Or, you know, you can take them, take the feed rollers off with the header on, uh, just leave the feed rollers on the right. header and drop it off. So either way, you can, it's, I mean, it's not really a massive task right. to get them off. Both of them have got the rock protect on them and everything as well, so, and obviously the metal. So it's very, well, say touch wood. Rarely, not no many foreign objects. Yeah. Get too far up into them, but uh, we have had. Well, that's that's it because you've got plenty of stone walls around there, haven't you? Yeah. Well, there's plenty of stones. <laughs> and that outside swath must be sometimes always, the, always the interesting one. Touch and go sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> are, are there some situations we go? We'll leave that till the end. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll do that one later. Someone, so you got a few metal detectors, a few rock detectors. We just leave that to the very last. Yeah, we'll come back to that one. 
So while we're sat here, David, waiting for another trailer, I mean, just talk us. I mean, you mentioned before the uh, the controls and the layout, but yeah, just talk us through that. How you've got on with that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, as I say, we've had experience with it with the 1180. We've had a few years now, and it's all. I mean, it's the screens self-explanatory. I think anyway. I mean, it's easy to work through. It's. I mean, you've got your. Uh, your header speed, your chop length, you can all adjust it on the screen. Your blower speed, you can adjust it just in the armrest here. Just two clicks of a button. Right, so you can and go, that, you've got a few shortcuts there yeah, as well. Yeah, shortcuts is easy. I mean, you can change your chop length on the screen. You've got buttons on the side here to change it. Going through all the sub menus and stuff like that, I mean, it's, it's no problem. You can yeah. find your way. No and problem. most of the stuff that you need is pretty much on that first yeah, page on yeah. that, I You'll suppose not, you could say a dashboard really. Yeah, I mean you hardly, very rarely move from that first page uh, yeah. very often, just now and again to go into different things, but no, I mean it's always, I mean you've got your, the kind of customer counters, your, all your header settings, additive if you're putting it on, everything's just to touch there, if you click them buttons you're straight into the menu, into everything right. that you need. And then I've got my flow set up here just to, you know, if there's any foreign objects that get in the filter, you'll notice it straight right. away by looking at that flow. It'll not be doing the one litre, two litres, whatever. Uh, it'll be different. So, and all these, the bottom boxes here, you can change all them to anything. Uh, so you can customise that screen to show you what you actually want? Yep. Right. You can. I mean, the joystick there, you're. I always find maybe other machines uh, you tend to grip the joystick to mm. push, yeah like the proportional push. one yeah, yeah yeah well this one I find I just rest my hand here and it's just a, a knock back and forward and you just work away there so performance wise you've got you know 900 horsepower on tap or thereabouts mm -hmm. what's the engine characteristics like of the V12 I mean uh, I mean, no, I mean, we've been getting on pretty well with them and it takes, well, that big engine, it takes a bit of a killing yeah. as well. And I mean, you can, I've, I mean, I've seen this, you pull a, a lump into it and you're right down at like 1500 RPM and stuff. And it just keeps, it never really fails to yeah. keep going anyway. No, it's pretty good. So in terms of like a torque curve, you don't suddenly fall off a cliff, it will... Yeah, like lights are there. Like that. <laughs> Big lumps. It will hang on. Yep. And you can actually sort of feel it absorbing yep. the lumps. You, you can feel it taking it in. Yeah. And when you had the 770, that would have been a V8 in that yeah, one. Yeah, that was it? a V8, yeah. yeah. And how does, you know, like the, like say, the characteristics compare between the V8 and the V12? Yeah, well, and, well, as uh, horsepower wise, I mean, you definitely obviously notice a big difference. But uh, even that, the 770, to be fair to it, it could really, it was, they were pretty similar characteristics to be yeah, honest. Yeah, in terms of being able to hang on. Yep. And, yeah, yep, hang on, you could, you could uh, drive it basically the same way yeah. as you drive one of these things, definitely. So as we're going up here now, then go on, what sort of, what sort of engine load can you get this thing under? That's not a challenge, by the way. I don't want <laughs> no you to kill it. Uh, it's, it, it, nor, normally you can get it sitting there, 98, 99, yeah. 100. That's it, we're so, good. So this yeah, is 98% there. Which is about a bang on yeah. in terms of how it feels, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like that's out at all, is it? No, no. no. And then that's, uh, what we're we talking, 1700 revs? Yeah. 16? 17, yeah. 16. And that's yeah, it, that's that's its happy place. Isn't yeah, it? that's yeah. it. That's it. Just sets nice. Yeah. Yeah. And a good 12k. Yeah. Just a st steady enough speed. Yeah. 50 foot swath. <laughs> 50 foot swath. <laughs> heavy second cut grass <laughs> at 12 kilometres an hour. I know. Jobs are good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're winning. Yeah. So yeah, just going back to maintenance, access wires around the machine. I mean, we talked a lot about the front end, but what about sort of in the in the middle of it, getting sort of behind the behind the spout, behind the accelerator, what's that like? Yeah, around the engine. 
No, no problem. I mean, there's night the they're big, huge panels on the side of it, so they just uh, you just open them up and you're, you're straight into everything. That, and you can see you can see all around most of the stuff, like the engine. You can see right round it. Uh, if there's anything at all, you can uh, anything that's maybe a bit odd looking. You may say you can you would spot it straight away. Yeah. Um, and in the back of the spout there, if you if you blocked it uh, or anything, I mean it's just a case of one couple panels out, maybe a couple bolts. That's it. Now you just get it cleared out and away you go again. Well, David, thank you very much for your time today. That's been absolutely spot on, getting your thoughts and insight into Chrome's new Big X 918 yep. Forager. Certainly sounds like you're enjoying it, put it that way. Yep. Uh, hopefully, as ever, you guys watching, hopefully you've uh, gained something a little bit from that, and yeah, basically what the 980 is uh, capable of. And as ever, go check out that new lamp on TV.com for loads more reviews like this and custom reviews and behind the scenes specials, all sorts of pieces and we will see you again next time.